Before we had power plants and electric lines supplying electricity to homes and cities, the only way to get electricity was through batteries. These are small, chemical-based devices that can produce a limited amount of electricity for a short time. But there's a problem with batteries. They are useful only for small gadgets, like wristwatches, remote controls, flashlights, and toys. But they couldn't power big machines, light up houses, or run factories. They were like a bucket of water. But what the world needed was a tap, a way to get unlimited, flowing electricity whenever and wherever needed. Also, even thinking of making big batteries was highly expensive and impractical because they would require huge amounts of chemicals, then they would be difficult to maintain and still wouldn't last long enough to power large systems. So people started wondering, is there a way to generate electricity at a large scale without the need of the battery? By the early 1800s, scientists had already made a few strange and exciting discoveries about electricity and magnetism. One of the most surprising result came when a Danish scientist named Hans Christian Ørsted noticed something unusual. When he passed an electric current through a wire, a nearby magnetic compass needle moved. This meant that electricity could create magnetism. It was a breakthrough. People realized that if you run electricity through a wire, it creates a magnetic field around it just like a bar magnet. This led to the invention of electromagnets, coils of wire that become magnets when current flows through them. But this sparked a new and even deeper question. Is the reverse case also possible? Can magnetism create electricity? That question fascinated a young scientist named Michael Faraday. He became determined to find out whether magnetism could be used to create electricity, because if that happened, then it would mean that we could generate electricity endlessly without relying on batteries and without needing chemicals. He started by placing a magnet near a coil of copper wire connected to a simple current detecting device, something like a compass needle called a galvanometer, which would swing left or right if any electric current flowed through the wire. We can also replace it with a bulb because it looks nice. At first, he held the magnet completely still, right next to the coil, but nothing happened. The needle didn't move. He tried reversing the polarity of the magnet and then holding it still again. But still, the needle didn't move even a little. But now here comes the magic, or I should say, science. He gently moved the magnet into the coil. Suddenly, the needle flicked. Faraday's heart must have skipped a beat. Electricity had been created just by moving the magnet. He tried it again, but this time pulling the magnet out of the coil. The needle jumped again, but in the opposite direction. He experimented further. He held the magnet still once more, and still he observed no current. This time, he moved the coil instead of the magnet, and to his surprise, the needle moved again. From these careful experiments, Faraday realized something powerful. It wasn't the magnet itself that produced electricity. It was the movement either of the magnet or of the coil. More precisely, it was the change in the magnetic field experienced by the coil that made electricity flow. This was the key. A changing magnetic field could generate current through the wire, which meant magnetism really could create electricity, but only when it changed. This principle became known as Faraday's Law of Electromagnetic Induction, and it was one of the most important discoveries in all of science. Now the meaning of the term induce is to succeed in persuading or leading someone to do something. The changing magnetic field persuades or leads the wire to produce electricity, even though no battery is connected. That's why the current and voltage that appear are called induced current and induced voltage. Okay, now consider this setup. At the top left, there's a tap. 
When you open it, water flows down and spins a wheel, just like a real-life hydroelectric dam, where falling water turns giant turbines. But here, instead of a regular wheel, the turbine has a magnet attached to it, with a red side marked N, or North Pole, and a blue side marked S, or South Pole. This magnet is spinning as the wheel turns. We can even see the speed here in rotations per minute. As the magnet spins, it creates a changing magnetic field, and this field passes through the coil of wire on the right side. What do we see next? The bulb lights up without any battery. Inside the coil, little blue dots with minus signs appear. These represent moving electrons, or electric current. Now that we understand how a spinning magnet can light up the bulb, let's imagine you're standing beside this setup, thinking like Faraday. You start to wonder, what if I want the bulb to glow brighter? What could I change? First, your eyes go to the coil of wire. It has a few loops wrapped around. You think, what if I add more loops? So you carefully wrap the wire around the coil again and again, making more turns. Now, every time the magnet spins, its changing magnetic field passes through more wire loops. And just like that, the bulb glows brighter. That makes sense. More loops means more spots for the magnetic field to push the electricity through. Next, you turn your attention to the spinning magnet itself. Right now, it's rotating slowly. What if you spin it faster? You open the tap wider, the water flows harder, the wheel spins quicker, and the magnet now turns faster too. The magnetic field is changing more rapidly, and again, the bulb glows brighter. Faster spin means faster change in the magnetic field, and that creates stronger electricity. Then you start thinking, what about the size of the coil? You try using a larger coil with more area, so the magnetic field passes through a wider space. And again, the bulb glows brighter. More area means the magnetic field can reach more of the wire at once, and that means more electricity is created. From all this, a clear pattern begins to form in your mind. The electricity being generated depends on how many loops of wire there are, how quickly the magnetic field is changing, and how big the area of the coil is that the field passes through. Also notice that if the magnet is kept stationary, no current is induced as expected. But if I change the area of the coil with time like this, then, boom, current is generated. This is exactly what Faraday figured out. And he captured it in one powerful formula. He said, the electric voltage generated, which we'll call E, is equal to minus N times D by B over DT. Let's understand what that means. E is the amount of electric voltage created in the wire. N is the number of loops in the wire. Phi B means magnetic flux, which is a fancier way of saying how many magnetic lines pass through the loop and is given as B times A times cos of theta. B is the strength of the magnetic field. A is the area of the loop, and theta is the angle between the direction of the magnetic field and the surface of the coil. If the field goes straight through the loop, then cos of theta is one. If it's sideways, cos of theta becomes zero. That's why the orientation of the coil matters too. And D over DT of this phi B means how fast the magnetic flux is changing with time. So if you move a magnet slowly, the change is small, so you get only a little voltage. If you move it quickly, the change is big, so you get more voltage. And if you have more loops, you multiply the effect. That's how generators in dams, wind turbines, and power plants work even today. Water stored in a dam is released and flows downward with great force. This moving water spins a large turbine connected to a magnet. As the magnet spins near coils of wire, electricity is generated. When the wind blows, 
it turns the blades of a wind turbine, which are connected to a spinning shaft. This shaft rotates a magnet inside a generator, creating a changing magnetic field near wire coils. That changing field produces electricity. In coal, gas, or nuclear power plants, fuel is burned or a nuclear reaction is used to boil water into steam. The steam spins a turbine, which turns a magnet inside a generator. That spinning magnet creates electricity by moving its magnetic field through wire coils, and this is how we get the electricity at a large scale that powers our entire modern world. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good!